Today, I'm going to share with you a glimpse into my portfolio. You've been asking for this for a long time. I have a list of the silver mining and silver development stage companies that I own, and I'm going to share with you my brief thoughts on each one, why I bought the stock, why I own the stock, and why you, if you're interested, may want to do your own due diligence, your own work, and check them out for yourself. Remember, this is not financial advice, just a glimpse into the companies that I own. In no particular order, we will run through this list. At the top, Discovery Silver Corp. That's my most recent purchase. They're a big silver development stage company in Mexico. I believe they have what they determine as like one of the largest silver deposits in the world. The stock has been beat down. I bought it a few weeks ago when all this news came out about Mexico banning open pit mining. The mine that they have planned, I believe, is an open pit mine. So it's a risky purchase based upon the fact that that Mexico may not indeed ban this open pit mining. There's a lot of people that think that's not going to happen. And when the stock got beat down, I think to about 44 cents, that's when I bought the stock. The next company on the list is fascinating. Cerro de Pasco Resources. They are in Peru and they have this deposit, I guess you will call it. It's the leftovers from a massive mine that I believe JP Morgan built like a hundred years ago. They, they had this massive mine. They mined silver, gold, copper, and all these tailings, all the waste after they had processed is in a giant pile. And because it was processed 100 years ago, they missed a significant amount. The, 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 the mining methods back then weren't as efficient as now. So in this giant pile of tailings, there's still a ton of silver, I believe some gold and copper as well. It's a really interesting story. I like the CEO, so I bought the stock probably two or three months ago. Next on the list, BlackRock Silver. I started buying that last year, 2023, around October. I like the CEO. They have a massive, they own half of this massive project in Nevada. So it's in the United States. It's called the Tonopah Project. It uh, originally was a mine that was uh, started and owned by Howard Hughes. They just released a, um, a resource number. Um, I believe it's 100 million ounces of silver. Look, I'm doing this all from memory, guys. So again, not financial advice. Do your own due diligence. But hey, millions and millions of ounces in the ground in the United States, in Nevada. And I also believe First Majestic Silver owns a sizable share, uh, a sizable number of shares in this company. The other side of that project is owned by Suma Silver. That's the next company on the list. I really love the CEO of this company. His name's Galen. I hear he's like a real competitive, very hardworking guy. And he owns the other half of this Tonopah uh, deposit in Nevada. Again, everything I said about BlackRock holds true for Suma. But Suma also has, I think it's called Mogollon Project, which is in New Mexico. Uh, it was a past producing mine. It's another massive deposit in the United States. Again, I encourage you to do your own due diligence, read about these companies. Next on the list is Silver Mountain Resources. They also are in Peru. Guys, Peru is a massive producer of silver. Silver Mountain uh, their plan is to reopen a mine and to do it very soon that is in Peru. Uh, believe that the mine is slated to be opened next year, reopened. There's a lot of infrastructure already in place, a lot of permits already in place. There's a mill, there's the mine, they've been doing drilling. Um, it's run by a management team that I really like. Again, that Silver Mountain Resources in Peru. The next is Capitan Silver. I really got interested in that because of this guy, Michael Gentili, who I follow. I believe, if I remember correctly, this is a stock that he is invested in. They also are in Mexico, in a very prolific part of Mexico. This is a development stage, exploration stage company. Really, pretty much all the companies I've talked about are, are in that same category. Development, exploration stage. 
Uh, but Capitan has another great management team. I believe in Michael Gentili. I know last I'd heard he owned the stock, still owns the stock. Capitan is one that you might want to check out as well. The next one is Dolly Varden Silver, probably one of the coolest CEOs uh, in the junior silver sector, Sean Kuhn Kuhn, they have a massive deposit up in British Columbia, Canada. So favorable jurisdiction. They're doing a lot of drilling, putting out a lot of great drill results. And I forget the specifics on how many millions, but I think it's maybe 40, 50 million. Again, do your own due diligence. You can go to these company websites. You can pull up their investor presentations. You can pull up their financials. Uh, dig into this for yourself. But Dolly Varden has a lot of silver in British Columbia. And uh, and I believe that the CEO of this company, Sean Kuhn Kuhn, he's a winner. The last company on the list is Silver Elephant Mining. Very interesting company, a stock that was decimated over the last maybe year, year and a half. I bought in, I think, around 20 cents a share. I bought most of these stocks late last year, somewhere between the October uh, December timeframe. But uh, John Lee, the CEO of that company, is taking what I think are some good concrete steps to move the company forward. They've got a massive deposit in Bolivia. And it's very interesting because what they've done is this deposit has some silver up near the surface, but then even a lot more silver deep in the ground. And the silver near the surface requires a processing um, uh, procedure that's very specific. And there's another company in that area. I think it's Andy's uh, Mining or Andy Silver that is now basically scraping the surface deposit silver, the stuff that's closer to the uh, surface, paying sil Silver Elephant for that and then processing it for them or processing, processing it for themselves. So Silver Elephant's basically created a source of cash flow that they can use to pay their general and administrative uh, expenses, continue to do some exploration. And the key thing to remember here is that the lion's share of their silver is, again, deep in the ground, and that's not being affected by this current um, uh, arrangement that they have with the other companies. So those are, that's a list of what, eight kind of pure silver plays. Remember, a lot of these are exploration development stage companies, very risky segment, but man, <laughs> just in my opinion, right? Whether you're talking gold exploration development or silver exploration development, these companies were beat down to just bargain basement prices. A lot of times with these silver developers, you're able to get silver in the ground, right, for like a dollar an ounce or something like that. And if the silver market really does catch up with the gold market, just that alone, right, that a lot of us think will happen, we could see crazy good returns. I mean, these the market caps of these companies, just the junior sector is so small that just the smallest amount of new money coming into the sector in general could have a major impact on the share prices. Again, please, this is not financial advice. These stocks are risky. It's a choice that I make. You know, I don't have any debt. Um, the money that I put into these companies, I don't want to lose, okay? But if it were to go away, it wouldn't be catastrophic for our family. Although I have to be honest, I do have what is a significant amount of our personal uh, net worth invested into these companies. The fi fi final two companies that we'll talk about will be Fortuna and First Mining Gold. And I'll tell you on both of those companies how they are also involved in silver. Channel sponsor Fortuna Mining actually started out as a silver mining company. They used to be known until just recently as Fortuna Silver. They still have an operating silver mine in Mexico. It is slated to be closed at the end of the year. But with these higher silver prices and possibly with some really positive exploration results they've been seeing lately, you never know. That mine may, uh, they may change their mind and, and decide to keep that mine open. But Fortuna also has a large silver mine in Peru. Now, look, the majority of Fortuna's revenue and net income now is generated from gold, but their roots are in silver and they do still have an operating, I believe it's Cayoma mine uh, in Peru where it's a silver specific mine. So you can get some exposure to silver 
with our friends and channel sponsor, Fortuna Mining as well. And First Mining Gold, believe it or not, their spring pole project, their massive project in Ontario, also has a significant amount of silver included in it. Now, they have an arrangement they signed with First Majestic Silver a few, few years back for a silver stream, but you still get exposure to silver with channel sponsor, First Mining Gold. Hey, if you want to get some exposure to real physical silver, don't forget about channel sponsor Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X. Follow my finger. But the key with them is they check all the boxes for anyone looking to buy precious metals, silver, gold, or platinum group metals online. They always have ultra competitive pricing. They always have a great selection. And most importantly, it's a company you can trust. Please help support the sponsors of Ron's Basement. I hope you enjoyed this glimpse into my portfolio of junior silver development, exploration, maybe even operating mining companies. Remember, I'm not giving financial advice, right? These mining companies, these stocks are risky. They do offer the opportunity, absolutely, for great, great returns, but you can also lose money investing in the company. So do your own due diligence. Make sure you know what you're doing when you're buying stocks, anything like that. If you need help, reach out to a professional. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a registered financial professional. Uh, I appreciate you being here. I always appreciate you spending your time with me here in the basement. If you can subscribe to the channel, that'd be very helpful, right? But most important, we just want you to come back. When you're here in the basement, you're a basement dweller. You're part of the group. We'll look forward to seeing you soon.